Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Edward channel. So today we will be discussing about veterinary obstetrics. That is unit 2 in veterinary gynecology and obstetrics, 4th year chapter. So we will be discussing about the gestational accidents. That is dropsy of the fetal membranes and the fetus. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. So what is dropsy? It is actually the building up of fluid in the body tissue because of the gestational accidents or the improper clearance of the accumulation of the fluid they get accumulated and they will not be evacuated properly so mainly we will be discussing about three dropsically conditions that is the three gestational dropsy accidents that is dropsy of the placenta that is accumulation of fluid in the placenta, dropsy of the fetal sac, and dropsy of the fetus. <clears throat> so the first one that is dropsy of the placenta, it is actually occurring due to the infection of placenta by the infectious organisms. Mainly the best agent that we can see in case of placenditis is the brucella abortus. So it makes the less the leathery placenta or intercotyledonary leathery appearance so frequently accompanies with placenditis edema build up in the placental cotyledons and um, carangles and this feels like dropsy of placenta so the dropsy of placenta abnormal cotyledon from the placenta of a cow with hydroallantois so we will be discussing about hydroallantois in the coming session and the cotyledon will be measuring more than five inches diameter that is excessive edema that is due to accumulation of fluid so the next is dropsy of the fetal sac, which is the most important in case of subjective examinations. So this is actually a pathological condition of the pregnant animal, in which this is characterized by excessive accumulation of fluid in the amniotic and the allantoic IP. So the incidence, oral incidence, or the epidemiological chance of incidence is actually 0.3 percentage. And in hydroallantois and hydroamniot, hydroallantois is encountered in most cases. So first of all, we will be discussing about hydroallantois or hydroallantois. So hydroallantois is the gestational pathological condition of the allantoic membrane characterized by rapid excessive accumulation of watery amber colored fluid filled over a period of 20 days, at least 20 days or 3 weeks in late gestation. So in the late gestation period, it will be rapidly progressing and the accumulation of water will be there in the allantoic membrane cavity. The species affected mostly in case of cattle and it is not even reported in the horses at all. So the normal volume of allantoic fluid actually in cow it will be nearly to 10 liters and this in case of very severe hydroallantoic condition it can go up to 100 liters and even there is a record of 250 liters hydroallantoic fluid. So in case of dog it's 10 to 15 ml normally and it can go to 100 ml and in case of sow and cat you can see the values of normal allantoic fluid. So hydroallantois etiology, there's a placental dysfunction due to lesser number of functional cotyledons. So cotyledons and carangles have to be forming a placentum-like condition and they have to exchange properly all the nutrients and they have to remove the waste and all. So whenever there is a dysfunction due to the lesser number of functional cotyledons, the waste or the waste fluid structures will get accumulated. So non-pregnant horn is not participating in the placental function that will lead to lesser number of cotyledons. And lesser number of present so non-infectious degeneration and necrosis of the endometrium that is in the case of aged animal geriatric animals the endometrium will not be functioning very properly as that of typhus so vascular disturbance in the allantois congenital lack of carangles so, hydroallantois clinical signs will be seeing like barrel shaped abdomen that is due to extension of the abdomen due to the fluid filled condition anorexia dehydration weakness difficulty in the respiration due to abdominal distension by the fluid structure Placentums and fetus are not palpable per rectum. Sudden increase in the weight and volume of the uterus due to the excess fluid accumulation. And this is the most important point. That is due to the weight of the hindling, there will be dislocation of hips and the cows will lie on her sternum and that will be look like blotted bullfrog appearance. Very important question in case of many MCQ examinations, this was asked. So this is actually the condition, barrel shaped appearance. So severe bilateral abdominal distension. Secondary to the hydroalloys is evident in case 
in case of a whole sheet breaching. So next condition is hydramnios. So hydramnios is the gestational pathological condition of the amniotic membrane characterized by gradual. So in case of hydrolandoid, it was rapid and this is gradual accumulation of fluid. So in case of normal pregnancy, there will be amniotic fluid secreted by the fetal salivary glands, lungs and associated structures. And due to the swallowing reflux, it will be regulated by the normal fetus. And in case of hydromnion, there will be abnormal fetus with different pathological conditions, prognathism, cleft palate, nasopharyngeal abnormalities. So no swallowing reflux that will lead to hydromnios. So this is actually the cleft palate and this is the prognathism with hydrocephalus condition. So the abnormalities will lead to hydromnion. So in case of difference between hydrolentois and hydromnion, you can see incidence in case of hydrolentois is very much more that is nearly to 95 percentage. And rate of development that is uh, within 20 days to one month. And hydromnios is very slow that is overall several months. Type of abdomen hydroalento is it's barrel shaped whereas in case of hydramnion it's pear shaped and it's less dense. And volume of the fluid will be nearly to same like uh, 150 liters in case of hydroalento and hydramnion it will be 100 liters. Uh, nearly it will be same in case of much less severe condition. Fluid characteristics will be watery ambery colored in case of hydroalento and in case of mucoid, viscoid therapy often contains muconium in case of hydromnion. So you can see that the case of uterine rupture is common in case of hydroalentoids, whereas it's uncommon in case of hydromnion. And you can see and memorize other points. Prognosis is guarded uh, to poor in case of hydroalentoids, fair to good in case of hydromnion. So treatment in cows, we have to about the pregnancy, that is termination of pregnancy using PGF2 alpha. Either we can go for natural or we can go for synthetic, that is clopostinone, or we can go for combination of PGF2 alpha and corticosteroids. And you should have to go for supportive therapy, that is fluid therapy and antibiotic therapy, because the case of chance of metritis and septicemia is very common since there is bacterial invasion. So you have to completely go for supportive therapy. So this is actually the treatment that is transcervical allantosynthesis. So for this catheter, you can relieve the fluid. So next condition is the dropsy of the fetus. So it is very simple in case of that is hydrocephalus, ascites and anasarca. So hydrocephalus is actually accumulation of fluid as a result of imbalance between the function and drainage of CSF. So in the brain or in the cranial portion there will be accumulation of fluid. So you can see this is the hydrocephalus condition. So fetal anasarca that is excessive accumulation of fluid in the subcutaneous tissue. It's mainly seen in pigs actually. And particularly mainly the head and limb region and sometimes it occurs in the case of multiple fetus condition so this is actually the case of fetal anasarca so fetal ascites that is abnormal excessive accumulation of fluids in the fetal abdomen that is peritoneal cavity thank you